less than half of sub-Saharan Africans have access to quality health care. A majority of Africans, mostly in the lower and middle income bracket, rely on underfunded public health facilities, while a small minority has access. Difficult access is in developing countries where we have um, millions of procedures that are needed that cannot be delivered uh, and to save lives, but also to prevent disabilities. Lancet Commission on Global Surgery that was issued in 2015 that stated that 5 billion out of the 7.3 billion at that time do not have access to safe and affordable surgical and anesthesia care. Access to high quality care worldwide is still a major challenge and we've seen it through the COVID pandemic, but especially in developing countries. Among these developing countries, Rwanda is challenging the inequitable status of healthcare in Africa by breaking barriers in the sector. Universal access to healthcare is a defining feature of the modern social contract. Good health affords people dignity and enables them to use their talents to the full. By building a robust healthcare system, Rwanda is leading the way in Africa to secure the lives, health and the future of its people. A priority sector for the nation, Rwanda has shown great promise in healthcare development through its Universal Access Program with over 84% insured. Citizens of Rwanda have access to primary health care. There is a lot of progress that has been made in infectious diseases, um, malaria, uh, tuberculosis, HIV AIDS. But there is an area, the surgical area, where uh, most of the developing countries are still lagging behind. While the problem of access to basic health care has been handled well in Rwanda. The issue of equitable access to advanced medicine still persists, largely attributed to a shortage of human resources. And the major gap is the workforce. We don't have enough people and we don't have enough trained people. Uh, in our country, we realize that to be able to reach the 5,000 per 1,000 population procedures that are needed uh, on a yearly basis, we need to multiply the number of procedures sixfold. And to make that happen, Rwanda is now home to a one-of-a-kind facility, AirCAD. AirCAD is not only a center of excellence for training surgeons, it's also a center of excellence for the research component and we'll be able to fill in the gaps in knowledge, but in technology that facilitates those surgeries to happen. Quick example is the imaging component. Before surgeons do a procedure, they need to see what's the organ that's sick, that's healed. So through uh, the, that IRCAD, there's a lot of studies that are being done to be able to improve the type of imaging, uh, images that the surgeon receive, and that involves uh, IT, artificial intelligence, uh, and computer skills. So it's not just the medical aspect, it's also the technological aspect. Uh, we've been, as a country, the focus on developing the workforce has always been uh, very high in the priority agenda. So from 2012 to 2018, we had a program of training uh, residents, speciality, and now we are starting program training subspeciality. While IRCAD is an investment-intensive project, Rwanda is expecting to monetize its state-of-the-art and specialized medical facilities by developing medical tourism in the nation. The, the cost is in millions, uh, in millions of dollars. But then uh, you need also to look at the advantages. As, as you said, uh, the, uh, uh, Dr. Patrick said, uh, there is a cost behind. Uh, but what uh, it was 
what is expected from it, uh, it's a it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, not not uh, just for health. Uh, the health, but uh, there is also uh, those uh, uh, other opportunities which will be uh, coming coming com coming there. There's still um, some advanced care that's not yet available on the continent, and for which people need to travel far to get the services. And mostly those are cancers, um, kidney diseases, and heart disease. And the aim is to be able to provide care locally, advanced and quality care locally, not only for the Rwandan population, but people in the region and also on, on the continent. So we are expecting that there will be lots of African brothers and sisters who will come here because there's nothing better than having people coming from different places to be at the same place, to exchange knowledge and to learn from each other. So we are very much looking forward to receiving them. Uh, if you can see even the geographic situation, uh, localization of Rwanda, it's uh, almost in the center of Africa. Uh, people, instead of to travel to look for, uh, to seek for training outside uh, the continent, they will just cross uh, the neighbor country to, to, uh, to have such kind of uh, uh, transfer of technology, transfer of uh, 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 knowledge uh, in, uh, just in the, uh, the, the door, uh, 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 just across. Uh, again, it's uh, Rwanda, uh, as you know very well, that uh, uh, we have uh, really a good traffic, uh, air traffic, which is uh, uh, fluid. Then also we have uh, uh, really uh, uh, immigration uh, friendly, uh, friendly immigration process where people can have uh, e-visa uh, easily, even hotels are really attractive and so on. We started that journey, so we are producing more and more surgeons. We have developed what we call the National Strategy for Health Professional Development uh, from 2020 to 2030 that will produce, uh, that will double the number of surgeons that we have. We will have uh, a, a, a level where we can uh, uh, people can uh, access uh, high quality healthcare in the, in the region. On its way to become a health hub in Africa, Rwanda recently hosted the prestigious International Conference on Public Health in Kigali and brought together several key stakeholders to discuss, deliberate and innovate actions to secure the health of this mighty continent. To bring key focus areas of the conference to the fore, the following conversation with CNBC Africa highlighted the agenda, gave an assessment of the current health status and the way forward for the continent as a whole. As we all know, the pandemic has a detrimental uh, impact on the, on the different sectors, including the health sector, but also the economic sectors. And um, the COVID pandemic, specifically the COVID-19 COVID COVID uh, pandemic, um, threatened all the gain that we had in the HIV, malaria, and TB, hmm. where by we, we have critical resources and the uh, and workforce to, to tackle the new resources as it has been drained from all the all this gain to tackle the new viruses. 90% of our malaria deaths are happening in Africa. Um, Africa is home to over two-thirds of people living with HIV. Um, Africa is the second most affected continent by tuberculosis. Um, Non-communicable diseases are rising. Over 12 countries now report um, non-communicable diseases accounting for around 50 to 80 percent of the deaths annually in their countries. Um, and several other issues that um, are best in Africa and no one is going to solve the problems for, for us, except we as Africans rise up um, and work together with the partners that have been work, working alongside us all these years. But we have to be at the forefront. We have to drive the agenda. We have to own the context and come up with our own innovative driven solutions for Africa. We have made some, some very good progress and um... So we need to ensure that uh, we all our people have access to healthcare without mm -hmm. any financial hardship mm -hmm. as a, a commitment to the universal coverage. So we need to work hard on that and uh, make sure that uh, we can help uh, 
can build a better health system to ensure that people have access, mm -hmm. quality access to healthcare, quality healthcare, but also they are financially protected for when they are going to access uh, services. The conference has uh, nine main tracks uh, in addition to the side events mm. and will tackle critical issues such as epidemiology, diagnostic and clinical management in the first track, mm -hmm. uh, R&D capacity in diagnostics, therapeutic and vaccine manufacturing, health system strengthening and universal health coverage, human health, uh, women health, lessons learned from the COVID pandemic, effective public health responses from outbreaks to pandemics and beyond, and then the, the whole of the society approach, mm -hmm. including the civil society when it gets to responding to pandemics. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also tackle uh, how it's important to refocus uh, on the diseases like HIV, TB, malaria. And finally, we will also address non-communicable diseases as a growing public health issue in Africa. It's an important uh, forum where we'll be sharing lessons learned and drive good practices to maximize win-win investment mm. that can build more resilient health systems. The message is clear. So the people of Africa deserve um, the right to, for, for health. And, um, and we have the potential for, in, to advance or accelerate our economic development by providing the best care for our people. Mm -hmm. And we all know that um, uh, healthy people uh, are also the productive people. They also uh, contribute to the economic uh, development uh, of, um, of, uh, of our country. So the, 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 the other thing that I want to mention is the only difference that uh, we all, uh, most of the time, trying to understand is the difference between uh, developed country and also developing country. It's, it's only two things, ill health and also low life expectancy. So if we can manage to um, build a strong health system, better uh, quality, providing uh, better quality of uh, of care, including all the inputs of the health system, you qualify human resource, better supply chain, and also data system also in place. We can be able to build um, a, strong, uh, a strong health system. The other thing what I wanted to mention, we need to, to shift, uh, also change our mindset uh, about this uh, aid-driven uh, priority and trying to, to to, to advance our agenda, depending on the needs that we have as our continent, to contextualize uh, in our settings what we have as a priorities, mm. trying to advocate, but at the same time trying to, to, to mobilize more resources domestically to ensure that we can sustain all the gain that we have in the sector, mm. but also pushing forward the, 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 the global health agenda, but also the public health agenda in Africa. At the final world, again, um, welcome to all delegates to the CPHI conference in Kigali. We look forward to connecting with you, discussing with you, uh, sharing um, ideas, strategic uh, buildings of strategic partnership to ensure that uh, African, the health of our people can be more improved, strengthened, but also uh, have Africa reach its, uh, its ambition, the vision. So the Africa we want. As the fastest emerging continent on the planet, Africa's health landscape is a ripe investment opportunity and one of the leading and most promising candidates among 54 nations. Rwanda is quickly reaching for the top position in the race to become the health centre of the continent.